man, the camera shows how big my forehead is. It's huge. I can't see my forehead. It's JP with the L. I hope y'all doing well. All jokes aside, let's go ahead and talk about the 2021 NBA Finals matchup. Tonight, we just witnessed Milwaukee ended up beating Atlanta in six games. Firstly, I want to go ahead and give the props to Atlanta. I think that Trey Young has definitely come to show that he is built for the playoffs. He's not afraid of taking the tough shots, clutch time shots. He's not afraid of the spotlight. And I really think it showed throughout this playoffs. It was really nice to see his narrative sort of change because I know at the start of the year, a lot of people really didn't like the fact that he was foul chasing, flopping, all that kind of stuff, flailing, jumping into the defenders to get free throws. Me, personally, I was on that side. I don't like that kind of ball play style. I mean, it works, so use it. But at the same time, it's like, ah, come on. It's kind of it's kind of wishy-washy when it comes to how you feel about it. Me, personally, I didn't like it. But seeing him go off in his playoffs against the Knicks in Madison Square Garden, everybody cursing him out in the arena, and he shushed them all, told him to go home because – New York next year got to be it for you guys and comes into Philly game seven doesn't come in shooting the ball very well but when it matters in the fourth quarter hit some crazy deep clutch threes got some good plays out of him and he really showed that he's a clutch player overall so I really think that seeing the narrative change for him was really nice when it comes to storylines this season also John Collins, Clint Capella, Kevin Herter, all these guys came to play. Cam Reddish coming in to contribute in his Game 6, almost forcing Game 7 with those six three-pointers. DeAndre Hunter obviously being out was a big loss for them. I think that he would have made a big impact, but sadly, you know, things happen that way. Lou Will still killed it this year. I really wish that we didn't have to trade you for Rondo, but Rondo was a glue guy for the LA Clippers, so it was a win-win. You guys got a good... Six man of the year caliber guy. Honestly should have more than three. But that is a discussion for another day. I think overall Atlanta deserves a credit. You guys fought hard. New coaching change with Mick McMillan. Obviously gave you guys the identity of a great defensive team. And I think that it really showed this offseason in the playoffs. It's really going to... Not the offseason. It's going to show really in the playoffs. It showed really well. Also when it comes to the offseason. Are you guys going to give John Collins max money? That is a discussion you guys need to have, general managers, owners, all that stuff. Is John Collins worth the max money? We saw him play small ball five pretty well. I think you guys should still keep Clint Capella no matter what happens. He is a great defender, great pick and roll guy, and he is great when you guys want to play big. So going on to the Milwaukee Bucks, I think obviously Giannis not being out is going to be the main X factor here because when it comes to him being out, they are not the same team without him on the court. Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton, Brooke Lopez, Bobby Portis, all these guys are good. Pat Connaughton, all these guys are very good. Dante DiVincenzo, they're skilled. Yes, they're good. It's just Giannis is the final piece to the puzzle. Giannis goes in, gets these easy dunks, gets them going. Drew Holiday is able to lock down the best teams. Parameter guy, whether it's going to be Chris Paul or Devin Booker in his finals matchup is only time will tell. I'm assuming he's going to guard CP and then Middleton's going to be on Devin Booker. But like I said, we will only find out in time. DeAndre Aiden is a way more, way better center than Brooke Lopez, in my opinion. Obviously, younger, way more athletic. He's just as good of a defender. Aiden can crash a glass. He is very good at rebounding, showed in the Clipper series. So I would know, believe me. And I think he's going to be a tough matchup for Brooke Lopez defensively. Also, you guys you guys have Jay Crowder, Mikael Bridges, Campaign, Torrey Craig. You guys have great perimeter defenders who can shoot, play great defense, and are going to help contribute off the bench and really set the core defensive tempo for the Phoenix Suns going into the series. So I think that overall we're definitely going to see some crazy matchups. I'm really excited for this finals. I know that injuries derailed. Both sides, and we probably wanted to see Clippers, Nets, Lakers, Nets, Lakers, Bucks, Lakers, Sixers, whoever you guys wanted to see. This is what we got. Injuries happen, freak accidents or not. It's part of the game. You got to play the team in front of you, and this is where we are. So, Phoenix versus Milwaukee, my full prediction. I'm going to say if Giannis does not play in this series whatsoever, 
Phoenix is going to take it in no more than six games. If he does play and if he's able to contribute at close to a high level where he where we're used to seeing of him, I think that the Bucks can take it in seven games. But you guys let me know in the comment section down below. I just wanted to give you guys my full breakdown. Let you guys know how much I'm excited. I know. So I'm a little quiet right now. It's midnight. I'm just trying to get a video out for you guys tomorrow so you guys got something to watch. Something to look forward to. But with all that being said, if you guys like this video, go ahead and please hit that like button. Also, don't forget to sub down below on the road to 50 subs. If we can get there by the end of the month, I would really appreciate it. So with all that being said, I will catch you all in the next video. Peace out.